Welcome to this relay testing video from Valence Electrical Training Services. One of the hardest parts of relay testing in the 21st century can be getting your laptop to talk to the test set or relay, and that's what we're going to talk about today. All of this material has been covered in depth in our How to Communicate with a Test Set or Relay blog post, which you can find at our website via the link in the description. There are two primary methods that you can use to communicate between devices in the relay testing world. The first method is a serial connection which hails all the way back to the early days of computer communication when information traveled through modems and phone lines. This method is much slower than Ethernet connections, but it is often easier to set up, and most importantly, your IT department probably doesn't block serial connections because it's too old-fashioned for them to care about. The second method I'm calling Ethernet communication, which is exactly the same way you connect to the internet. This connection is faster, more reliable, and relatively simple to set up, but everyone knows that the internet is a dangerous place, so your IT department has probably thrown up some roadblocks that can make this communication method difficult. We're going to look at serial connections in this video, and then Ethernet connections in the next video of the series. Most modern computers do not have a serial port, so a USB to serial adapter is often required to create a communication path with the technology you have. There are hundreds of different models that you can buy, and some are better than others. I recommend the one on the screen because it was recommended to me by a test set rental company as the one they've never had a problem with. It often installs without requiring a driver, and it's dirt cheap. I picked mine up on Amazon for 12 bucks, and you can find the link in the blog post. You can also use a serial to Bluetooth converter, and I hear good things about them when they are purchased from a company like SEL. They are a little pricey, however, and you do have to worry about battery life. Some vendors use an old-fashioned USB port to communicate via serial, which requires a proprietary cable and or drivers to communicate with the test set. If this is the case, make sure this cable gets a special place with your test set so that you never forget it. You young kids today are lucky because almost all manufacturers in the relay world have pretty much standardized on DB9 connections that have nine pins. In the old days, we had to carry an entire communication kit with a breakout board to make sure that we were able to create any pin combination we needed after walking uphill both ways to work. Nowadays, I carry a 25-foot serial cable with a DB9 connection on either end with some gender benders that serve me well and allow me to reach every relay in the substation from one location. There are two kinds of serial cables that you need to be aware of. A null modem cable is what we used to connect between modems and computers back in the day, and they are special because pins 2 and 3 are crossed between the two ends. That means that pin 2 on one end is connected to pin 3 on the other in both directions. Pins 2 and 3 are the same on both sides of a straight through cable, hence the name. You should know what kind of cable is required to communicate with your device. As a general rule, GEUR and GESR relays use straight through cables, and pretty much everyone else, including SEL, Beckwith, and Siemens, use null modem cables. This can get confusing because cables often don't have markings indicating what kind of cable they are. You're just supposed to know which cable you bought. You can make a straight-through cable a null modem cable by using a null modem adapter that will cross the pins for you. The same works in reverse, which is why I don't carry two cables. I just use a null modem adapter whenever I want the other kind of cable. Two wrongs can make a right in this situation because I can make a straight-through cable connection by applying a null modem adapter to a null modem cable. For those of you who might have bought a special cable or Bluetooth adapter from SEL, you can use those cables on a GE relay by simply changing the DTE-DCE switch to the other position. That switches the null modem connection to a straight through that you can use whenever you want to. Just remember to put the switch back when you need a null modem again. The first step in serial communication is making a connection between your laptop and the device you want to communicate with. Please make sure you actually do this step first. I can't tell you the number of students I've seen confused because their laptop won't talk to the relay, and then they start getting frustrated and angry with their computer until they sheepishly notice that they didn't connect both ends of the cable. Once you get the connection between devices, you want to get the communication or COM address of the serial port. 
You can do this by going to Device Manager in your computer settings. Notice I didn't say Devices and Printers. You have to go to Device Manager as I'm showing here. You can also find the Device Manager in the Settings area of Windows 7 as you can see in this screenshot. There are a few ways to get there and I'll show you them using Windows 10. The easiest way is to use the Start and Search function by pressing the Start button on the window or your keyboard and then typing Device and clicking on Device Manager. Once you have Device Manager open, you want to go to Ports, Com, and LPT. Then you want to find the branch under the tree that says something to the effect of USB to Serial COM port, and in this case, I'm in COM port 5. You want to make sure that you always use the same USB port whenever you're connecting to your laptop because that COM port can change if you put your adapter in another USB port. If you have multiple branches in your tree and you're not sure which one is which, you can tell by unplugging the adapter, and you can see it went away, and I also lost all of my COM port branches. And if I plug this into another USB port, you can see it came back, but this time it's COM port 4. This is also true for any USB keys you might be using for your software. You always want to use the same USB port whenever you can. The other way to get there is to go through Settings. So I can go to the Start menu, Settings, Devices, scroll all the way down to the Device Manager, and you can see that the screen is pretty much the same as it was before. Here's that COM port address in Windows 7 again. You can see it pretty much looks identical to Windows 10. Sometimes Windows will assign an address above 10, and some software won't accept a COM address greater than 10. That means we won't be able to talk to the relay. But you can change the COM port address by going back to the Device Manager, finding this USB to serial adapter, right-clicking and saying Properties, go to Port Settings, Advanced, and here's where you can change the COM port address. Now you can see it says COM5 is in use. Sometimes Windows will do that, and it's really not being used, and you can use any COM port address, except don't use one in most cases. By setting it to COM5, I'm just going to overwrite whatever Windows had before, and it will be COM5 from this point forward. Once you get the address set and record it on your notepad, you can open up the software you're going to use to talk to the relay and select the communication setup. We're only going to cover the basics in this video. You can get more detailed information about specific software in the blog post. We also go into this topic in greater depth in our How to Test Protective Relays Online seminar. Step number one, you want to tell the software what COM port you are using. Step number two, set the speed of communication or baud rate if you want to use old-fashioned terminology. SEL relays typically come from the factory at 2400 baud, and that would be frustratingly slow. I like to find out what the final baud rate will be from the settings, and then set the port speed to that before I start communicating, so that I don't have to worry about losing communication when I send the settings in bulk. You shouldn't set the baud rate higher than 38400, because serial communications can get flaky when speeds get higher. Most people have settled on 19200 baud as a good trade-off between speed and reliability. Once you get the baud rate set, you want to click Connect. If you're using Accelerator, look to the bottom left-hand side of the screen. If the red and green lights don't start turning on and off immediately, something's wrong with your setup and you should start at the beginning again. On GE relays, wait a couple of seconds after clicking Connect and the software will tell you if there's a problem or not. I don't often look at the baud rate in the relay in these situations and just try the other baud rate if it fails because there are normally only two to choose from. What happens if you can't communicate? Start at the beginning and make sure you followed all of the steps. Step number one, do you have a physical connection? Do you have the right kind of cable? Try adding a null modem to make sure. Is the baud rate correct? Is the relay communication port programmed with the correct protocol in the relay? I've had bad luck with USB 3 ports in the past. If you look at the physical USB port and it's blue, try another port that's not blue if you can. I've also had a couple of rare cases where something happened to the USB to serial converter driver and communication to SEL relays was normal, but GEUR relay communication was painfully slow. I uninstalled and reinstalled the driver and suddenly everything was fine. If none of these steps help, try using another computer and or communication equipment to see if you can narrow the problem down to the relay, your computer, or anything else in the chain between the two. That's all we have to show you about serial communication. 
You can check out the blog post in the description to get more detailed information about serial communication there. You can also learn all of the steps that I use to communicate and test relays in the How to Test Protective Relays online seminar by following the link in the description. Remember to like, subscribe, and comment on this video and or blog post so that Google knows it's interesting, which means that we can keep producing free content like this. We'll look forward to seeing you in the next video about Ethernet communication, and don't forget to have fun out there.